So I always tell people <clears throat> that the Lord is the Lord of the new. Amen? He's the God of the new. He's not the God of the old, not the God of the past. Every time Jesus becomes part of something, it either gets better, it either multiplies, or it becomes new. <laughs> Hallelujah? The Bible says, for we are a new creation. Hallelujah? Therefore, if any man is in Christ, he is a new creation. You become a new creation. And in this week, I had the opportunity to speak to a very big company. And I had the opportunity on a Friday over a Teams meeting, I could preach to a very, very big company. And uh, lots of people all over in boardrooms, all over the country. And I had the opportunity, like I said, to minister to them and preach to them and give them a message. And at that moment, before I started preaching to them, I thought, Lord, what can I share with them? What should I, what should I share? What can I teach? What can I give them to build them up, to motivate them, to help them, support them? And I weren't really sure at that moment what I had to share. But as I started speaking to them, the Lord showed me exactly what I had to do. So I was really glad when that happened because everything just fell into place. But that day when I spoke to them, they had sad news that one of their members um, actually passed away in that week. And that's when I heard the news when the Lord said to me, that's what you're going to speak about. Because before that, I weren't sure. And I got onto the Zoom meeting. I was still like, Lord, please show me what I need to speak about. And when they mentioned that one of their people passed away, I immediately knew. And the Lord said to me, I wanted to preach about this and speak about this. And my message that I shared with them is that we already have the victory. And I spoke about that last Sunday, just real quick. I mentioned that and I shared that with you. But I said that we have the victory already. We don't need to fight. Satan is already overcome. Don't be taunted. Don't be tempted to fight him. You don't need to fight him. Are you all with me? The Bible says, wear the whole armor of God. And when you've done all to stand, keep standing. It doesn't say, then start fighting. It says, stand. Keep on standing. When God gives us that armor, we should stand with that armor. So when I stand, it means I have a revelation of who I am in Christ. And I'm standing on it. I'm not going to be swayed. I'm not going to be offended. I'm not going to be taught otherwise. I'm going to stand in what I know. And what I know is that I have already overcome through Christ that strengthens me. Hallelujah. I'm going to stand in who I know I am. See, the first sin in the Bible started when somebody was fooled into believing something different than the truth. What do I mean by that? The Bible says that God created Adam and Eve in his image and his likeness. So were they like God? Yes. They were created in his image and in his likeness. So they were like God. What were they tempted in if they were really like God? Satan came, he said, if, if you eat of this fruit then you will be like God. Eve should have said, Satan, I know who I am. And she should have stood in what she believed. She had to stand in her revelation and say, Satan, you're not going to move me. I'm not going to fight you. I'm not going to get upset with you. I'm not going to get offended or fearful. All I'm going to say is, but I am like him. I'm not going to be tricked by you. So the first sin in the Bible was when we got tricked to do something we did not have to do. Are you all with me? We had to do something to prove something. You didn't have to prove anything. <laughs> you didn't have to do anything if you know who you are. Let me go on. In the same way that the first Adam was tempted into sin, Adam and Eve tempted into sin, in the same way the devil tried to tempt Jesus, who is the last Adam. What did Satan come and do when Jesus was hanging on the cross? What did Satan ask him? He said, if you are the son of God, 
then climb down from this cross. See, it is as if Satan tried to trick the second Adam or the last Adam in the very same way that he tricked the first one. He tricked Adam and Eve saying that if you do this, then you will be like him. So he caused them to doubt who they were. They felt, okay, so if we have to then eat of this fruit, then, then will we be like him? So we're not really like him? So Satan, you're telling us that we are not really like him? You're telling us that our eyes cannot really see See, they were like him already, but they were tricked into believing they were not. Today, when we have accepted Jesus, if we have been born again, we've been washed in the blood of Jesus, all things have become new, what will Satan continually try to do to tell you that you're not? He will try to tell you you're not born again. He will try to tell you you're still guilty. You are still bad. You are not new in Christ. You are not born again. You are not holy and blameless in the presence of the Lord. You are not good enough to pray. You are not good enough to pray for someone else. You are not good enough to preach the gospel. Come on, he will continually try and fool you into believing you are someone different than you are. And that is the fight. That is the fight of good faith that we are fighting every day. That is the good fight of faith. Every day standing with the armor of God saying, I know who I am. I know I'm born again. I know that I'm filled with the Holy Spirit. I know that God hears me. Are you all with me? So the second time Satan tried to tempt was when he tempted Jesus. When he said, if you are the son of God. So somehow he wanted Jesus to doubt. Why did he want him to doubt? Because here he's hanging on a cross. Satan could have said, well, why if your father then loves you, why will he let you hang on a cross? Why if God is so full of love and why if God can do anything and save everyone and change everything, then why are you, his son, who have done nothing wrong, why are you hanging on a cross? See, it is the times when we are weak. It's a time when we are struggling. It's in the times that we are suffering that Satan will always come and tempt you to see if you know who you are. And that's exactly why the scripture says, Submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. But many of, of us read that scripture wrong, and I've preached on that a while ago. We only read, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. That's not the scripture. Please don't resist the devil <laughs> without submitting to God. It's not going to turn out good. Are you all with me? It doesn't say resist Satan and he will flee from you. It says submit to God, number one. Number two, resist the devil. Number three, and then he will flee. See, sometimes we resist the devil without submitting to God. You're going to make the biggest mistake of your life when you do that. The only way we can resist the devil is when we submit to God. What do you mean submit to God? Oh, but the, the devil is attacking me in every area of my life. In this area, in my marriage, in my family, in my finances, in my business. In every area, the devil is attacking me. Well, the first thing you need to do is submit in every area to the Lord. And when you submit to him in all those areas, then resist him and then he will flee. He will go. See, Jesus resisted Satan even in the garden even in the desert, Jesus resisted him. If you are the son of God, then turn these rocks into bread. If you are the son, if you are the son. See, over and over again, Satan wanted to tempt Jesus to believe that he's not the son. If you are the son, then why are you in this desert? If you are the son, then why are you hungry? Why are you thirsty? Won't God look after you? What God left you, God forsake you. Now you're hanging on a cross. You are experiencing pains that no one has ever experienced. The all the sin of the world is upon you. How can you then still believe? 
Oh, it's exactly those times when we need to know who we are in Christ. People sometimes ask, oh, you're more you and your family, you've been so much, you've been through so much lately, last couple of months, last couple of years, how are you still smiling? How are you still preaching? How are you still going ahead, running the race? Why are you still loving God? Why do you still think that he cares about you? People have asked me those questions and I've said, I know who I am. And nothing's going to change it. I know who I am because I know who he is. And that's what I shared to you all two weeks ago when I said that Peter didn't know who he was. That's why his name was always Simon. Until the day Jesus created the opportunity for him to say, I know who you are. You are the Christ. You are the Son of God. You are the the Messiah. That's who you are, the anointed one. And then Jesus said, Simon, from now on, your name will no longer be Simon, but it will change to Peter. Your name changes. And I think at that moment, I think Jesus wanted to grab him and say, Peter, from today on, everything's going to become new. Everything will become new in your life. Everything is changing today. Come on, when Paul, still Saul at that time, met Jesus, everything changed. Everything became new. Even his eyesight became new. He became a whole new creation. His name changed from Saul to Paul. And some of you might say, but you're more I've already given my heart to the Lord many years ago, but I've missed it again. I've done wrong again. I've, I've, I've been through so many attacks and I'm hurt. I'm crippled at the moment. Can the Lord still make me new? Oh, come on, Lord. His mercies are new every morning. His mercies are new every day. And the Lord spoke to me about a couple of things lately. And I said, yo, my finances is almost like manna. It is just enough for every day, but every day he provides. Every day he gives enough to get you through every day. Every day he is faithful. And that's how his grace works. And the Lord spoke to me about this manna the last couple of months. And so my mom approached me last week and she spoke about the manna. How wonderful the manna of God is. And even today still, they can't figure out what manna is made up out of. What that manna was made up out of. They can't tell you, but that manna was more than enough to have enough vitamins, proteins, minerals, acids, everything that they needed that day to function perfectly well in the desert. Come on, in a scorching desert, walking the whole day. The manna that God gave them was enough every day for what they needed in the desert. And it kept them strong. And God told them, don't put some of it away for the next day because I'll supply tomorrow again. Do you understand? It's like having manna faith. And I want to speak about manna faith today. Manna faith. It is to believe that his mercies are new every morning. That God can make anything new every day. God doesn't make you new the day when he saves you and then says, now you're up, it's up to yourself. Now you go on and do what you need to. I'm going to influence you with my Holy Spirit. I will send my angels to help you, but now it's, it's you. No, 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 no. Come on, if Jesus is part of something, like I said in the beginning, if Jesus steps into a room, if Jesus takes your fish and bread, if Jesus puts his hands on you, if Jesus speaks to you, things change. Amen? All things become new. Like I said, either if something is sick, it becomes, it, it becomes holy and blameless and healthy. If something is sinful, it's forgiven. If someone is angry, they get peace. If someone is demon possessed, they're set free. <laughs> if you give him your food, he multiplies it. If you give him your worries, he turns them into peace. If you give him your ashes, he turns it into beauty. If you give him the little you have, he gives you more than enough to contain. Come on, that's the God we serve. Hallelujah. He makes all things new. He makes all things new. And I just, I so felt that that this morning, and I might only be preaching for 15 minutes today, because I still have to baptize five people today, but... He's going to make all things new. 
Come on, are you hearing me today? I sound like Reverend Sam Swig when he comes. Do you hear me? <laughs> are you listening? <laughs> Reverend Sam always says, are you listening? Do you believe that God can still make all things new for you today? Now I'm really serious when I'm asking that question. Don't just say amen immediately. Think about it. Do you think that you've messed up too bad that God can't make everything new? Do you really believe that? That a God, that everything is possible with him. He can do all things. The Bible says with man, there's, things are impossible, but with God, all things are possible. Come on, you might be fooled right now and the devil might be telling you something different than what you ought to believe. The devil might be telling you what he asked Adam in the beginning. If you want to be like God, then do this. Jesus, if you are really the son of God, then do this. Don't let him lie to you. Don't think you are sitting here today after you have received Jesus that you have to do anything to prove who you are. Can I tell you what you need to do? Stand in who you know you are. Stand in what you know that he's done for you. Don't doubt that. Satan wants you to doubt because when you doubt, he can rob you from it. He can rob you of what God has given you. You need to stand in knowing who you are. You need to stand in the fact that you know that even if you don't know what tomorrow might bring, that his manner will still show up. That you'll still be satisfied. And even if you, th if you feel you don't deserve God intervening into your life, even if you feel you don't deserve that God will step into your life, it's not up to you. It's up to what he has already done. It's up to who he is, not who I am. And that is what we need to stand in today. That's where we need to be. You know, how many families and how many young men and young women have come to us in, in, in Hope Corner? Come on, Don and Marilise can testify with us. There's so many people, my parents, there's so many people sitting here today that can testify with us and say that they, where, where people have given up on you, and people said, you'll never change. People said, nothing will ever change. It will always be this way. With God, with God, all things are possible. You can ask me, why do I, will I always keep believing? Why will I always keep believing? It's because I've seen too much to ever doubt God. He's been too faithful to me. He's been too good to me for me to doubt that he can do it. God is able to do anything. I don't know if my friend is here today. But a one friend, and I hope they will testify one day soon, but his whole life was collapsing and falling apart. His whole life. I think at that moment he felt it's not worth it. And he almost took his life that night. If we didn't find him, I think he would have been dead today. But I remember when I grabbed him, I said, Jesus can still make everything new. And at first he said, no, I don't believe it. It can't, things can't change anymore. I'm too far gone. Things are too far gone. Nothing's gonna change. The best thing that can happen is just for me to go to him. That's all I want. I said, no. And we kept him awake, we prayed over him, and I kept on crying. I said, he can still make everything new. As long as there is still breath in your lungs, God can still make it new. And I want to read the scripture to you. <clears throat> Isaiah 43 verse 19. It says, behold, I am doing a new thing. Now hear what it says, now, say now. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive and know it and, uh, and will you not give heed to it? I will even make a way in the wilderness 
and rivers in the desert. Oh, I'm going to stop there today. I'm going to stop there. He says, even now, there's a new CD, and I'm not promoting it today, but there's a new CD of Jesus Culture that they launched now recently, the last two days. Go and download it. But the one of their songs is, why not now? Why not now? And if you want to see me upset, you must let somebody tell me, no, 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 I'll, 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 I'll. I'll accept Jesus next week. I first need to sort things out in my life. If you want to see me upset, you must say that to me. I'll grab you. I'll say, why not now? Why do we want to wait? No, I first want to do this and this, and then I'm going to change my life. I'm going to change my ways. I'm going to leave this addiction, or I'm going to leave this habit. Just give me a bit of time. No, 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 no. Why not now? Why not now? Why not today? Yeah, I, I know I need to forgive that person, but yeah, that's first working through a couple of things. Why not now? Why not now? Come on, turn to somebody next to you, ask them, why not now? Yes, I want to give my everything to God. Why not now? Why, why wait? Why not now? My sister and them had at the, the TV show, why wait? Why wait? Why not now? If Jesus says, now I make all things new, why can he not do it for you now? Don't wait till tomorrow what about now? What about now? And I've been preaching on kingdom for, a, for this whole quarter. And I mentioned that we are stepping into many things, new things. And next Sunday, I'll make all those announcements. We are putting a couple of guys together for a panel in our church. It's going to help me manage. Next Sunday, I'm preaching away. I'm preaching in Hazy View. And then a couple of weekends again, I'm preaching in Stillfontaine at the conference. But I wanted to pray with me and pray for me. But we're going to do a couple of things in our ministry, form a good, a good relationship with many of, of the people in the ministry. We're going to have a family bri again soon to get to know each other bri very soon. So that all of us and all of those who are here for the first time can get together. Who's here for the first time today? Anybody here for the first time? Here we have someone here in front. They're at the back. There's a, there's a hand there at the back. Just say welcome. Welcome, guys. We're glad you are here. We are really glad you are here today. We pray that you will find your home with us, that you'll be planted. Amen. Last week I made a joke. I said, we pot plant in As we geplant word, we have to be planted. And we have to be planted in the house of the Lord. Amen. So that we can grow. If we are not planted, we're never going to grow. So I pray that you will grow with us in this church, in this ministry. But I want you guys to be excited. We're going to make a video in this week with all the information that you need, with all the announcements that you need. And we're going to send it to you on the groups and on Facebook. Um, and you will all receive that. If you don't receive it, please like and subscribe, Facebook, YouTube. We're going to send it on all those channels so that you can receive it, so that you can know what we are planning for this quarter. And I spoke to everyone, I said that many of us have the wrong idea about the end times, when Jesus would return. You know, we are taught many different things, or many different theories of all of that, and I mentioned to you all that. We're going to speak a bit about revelation. I'm going to explain revelation to you. In the next couple of weeks, me and Pastor Latanya, we'll be looking forward to do that because Revelation is a good book, amen? Don't make it physical, it's a spiritual book that you need to understand. And the Bible clearly says that John, who wrote the book, said, I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day. Let me just give you a foretaste. It says, the Lord's day was when Jesus was crucified. So John said, I was in the Spirit on the day when Jesus was crucified. And the things John wrote down in Revelation was the things he saw while Jesus was being crucified. That's what he saw. And that's what he wrote in Revelation. So I think when you all understand, when you hear the book of Revelation, you understand it, you're going to understand kingdom much better. Our goal is not to go away. Our goal 
is to step into his kingdom on this earth which he came to establish. Amen? That's why we pray, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on this earth as it is in heaven. We don't have to die to go to heaven. We have to be born again to step into heaven on this earth. Amen? Amen? Why not now? Why not today? The Bible says, today when you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts like your forefathers in the desert. But mix the word with faith. Come on, let's all stand together. Let's all stand together. And then the, all those that we're going to baptize, you are welcome to move so long to the baptism pool. You can go and get dressed and meet me at the baptism pool because we, I don't want to end the meeting today and just do the baptisms afterwards. I want to do it in the service. So all I'm asking is just 10 more minutes. Stay with us here. Be witnesses of all those who are going to baptize today. So all those who need to get baptized you can go out so long, go and get dressed. Come and meet me in the front. I'm going to get dressed just now to baptize you. Can't wait to do that. And Pastor Latanya will share something real quick. And they're going to make music while we all sit and while we all watch. We would love for you to watch. But today I want to leave this with you. The Bible says, behold, I make all things new. And it says here that even if you find yourself in the desert... See, in a desert, you can't think of new things because you know that there's no rain. You know that there's no seeds in the ground. You know that there's no plants. So you don't even expect something to grow because it's a desert. But you're, God says, I will even make rivers and streams. I'll wait, make a way in the desert. See, God spoke to Israel and they all thought, oh, God is not providing for us. Can God do this? Can God do that? And God caused manna to rain down from heaven. And nobody's ever done that. That is impossible. God can do it, and he did it. We sang the song, you are, you've moved the mountains, and I believe you can do it again. Today I want to tell you, don't think that God will stop giving to you. Don't think that God is done with you. He is not done with you. God will give you manna yesterday, today, and tomorrow. He's the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Please don't think that if things haven't worked out the way you planned it, that God cannot make everything new. He can make everything new. I've seen the Lord give all people brand new hearts, brand new lungs, brand new eyes. We were once in Botswana and the lady said, I don't know if God wants to heal me, but if he wants to, he can heal me. Her eyes were white as snow. She was completely blind, couldn't see. And I remember Aisha, my wife, grabbed her and she said, Jesus heals you right now. And the lady said, okay. The next moment I stood in front of her, I put my hand up and the lady said, I see five fingers, four fingers, Two fingers, one finger. She could see completely well. She was completely blind. She couldn't see. She completely lost her sight. Aisha prayed for her. She started seeing through those white eyes. She could see completely well. Nothing wrong. Perfectly healed. Even at an old age. God doesn't think you're too old. Come on, amen. God won't think, yeah, you're too old or you're too young or you've messed up too much or your name is too bad. God doesn't care about that. If you can just believe, he can do it. I believe you can do it again. Come on, let's all close our eyes this morning. Come on, just stay where you are. Put your hand on your heart. Say, Lord Jesus, I know you are not done yet. You are not done with me. Today, I confess, I announce, and I declare, you will make all things new. You will make all things new. I believe that. I choose to believe that today. I give you the full right in my life. 
Come and change everything around. Come and make all things new. Please, Jesus. The Bible says, you will take out the heart of stone and you will give me a new heart, a heart of flesh, a heart to know you. I'll receive it today. Come on, there where you are, just keep your eyes closed and just pray for a couple of minutes. Just pray for a couple of minutes. Just say, Jesus, thank you. Lord, I'm giving you all my problems. I'm giving you all my ashes. I'm giving you all my disappointments. Jesus, I'm giving you all my failures. Jesus, I'm giving you all my fears. I lay down at your feet. Oh, Jesus, please make it all new. Please make it all new. I know that I'm a new creation. The old has passed and the new has come. Come and make all things new, Jesus. I'm trusting you with it, Jesus. Like the new manna every day. So are your mercies new every day. I don't need yesterday's grace. I don't need yesterday's mercies. It is new every morning. And I receive it this morning. I receive it this morning. I receive it this day, Jesus. I make it my own. I make it my own. All things new. Come on, declare that over your life. All things new. All things new. In Jesus' name. All things new. All things new. All things new. Relationships new. Bodies new. Hearts new. Thoughts new. Relationships new. Visions new. Motives new, all things new, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, if you believe that, just say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, I receive it. I receive it today. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, I feel the Lord is just doing things today. The Lord is doing things right now. Even in your finances, I believe God is doing something now. Even in your marriage, I believe God is doing something now. Even in your business, God is doing something now. Even in your children's lives, God is doing something now. I know that he hears us. He's making all things new. Please, Jesus. There where we've missed it, please, Lord, come and make it new. There where we failed, please, Lord, come and make it new. Today, we give it to you. We put it in your hands, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.